Welcome back to Bridges of the World, our weekly show. And today we are here in Amsterdam. What? R wrong, wrong show? Oh, switch the film, switch the film. All right, so let's take our Mr. Robot here. I'm not gonna take Mr. Robot. But I am going to take the pre-sketch of Mr. Robot. And I'm going to squeeze down. There we go. So this was the pre-sketch. And let's apply what we learned here to our uh, pre-sketch. Fill 100. There we go. So what I'm going to do is, again, the same thing as I always do. Simplify it and turn this into even blockier shapes than we already have it there. So let's do that. All right, and while I sketch our simplified robot version, let me talk about today's sponsor, which is me. Yay. Well, technically there is no sponsor, but I did compile the PSD file and all the videos of my big Mr. Robot from the beginning of this video into one nice package. So you can see firsthand how I apply the fundamentals I talk about in this video into my own drawings. If you want to support me, you can do that by purchasing this video package on Gumroad. Take a look at the link in the description down below. All right, so here we have our simplified version of the robot, and that's a pre-sketch. Let me make a new layer. So this is simple. This is pre-sketch. I need a P there. And then this will be value, values. Okay, so as I said, values, what I always do, lasso tool, uh, I usually, when I was younger, I only used the polygonal lasso tool, but now I use the normal lasso tool. And what I do is I just press Alt. And then when you have Alt pressed, the normal lasso tool turns into a polygonal lasso tool. And it also works the other way around. So if you have a polygonal lasso tool and you press Alt, you can freely select stuff. So it's, I feel like it just speeds up things just a little bit. So I'm nicely, well, now, because I'm not trying to be super accurate, I am not nicely clicking inside of the lines, but uh, when you're doing your drawing, I would suggest that you do just like we did in the beginning with our uh, cubes and whatnot. And as you can see, I uh, stuck to the main shapes, well, the simple shapes, what we're talking about. We don't have a sphere here, but we have rectangles and wedges in this case and cylinders and i'm going to fill this with white there we go and i'm going to lock the layer and just like before let me let me turn off the color here and pick this gray here and fill our value with that gray there we go and now what we can do is just say go back to the simple one i'm going to say this is our sun again, or our light source, which means the front is going to be in shadow. So I'm going back to the values, picking a darker one. And let's see what is definitely in dark area. This is dark. Uh, this is dark. I would say this is dark. And maybe this is also dark. And here, this one, this one is for sure dark. And what I mean by this is that there is very little light going in there. So those areas will be the, the darkest ones. Uh, and the rest I will probably do with uh, gradients. So I will just sort of give it a fit. It's like one thing that I like to do is just give a grade, an equal gradient to all. So I'm going to do these pre-selections. So I know this side is all going to be in shadow. Um, and this here is also shadow. Same, well, that's that, but this one is in shadow. And this one as well. Let me see if I missed anything. Uh, maybe a little bit of this, see how it looks. I zoom out, oh yeah, here the front of the, the fisticuffs, something like that. 
and here also the button. Okay, Control H or Command H. I hide the shadows, well, the selection. There we go. Something like this. All right. So I know that this area is in shadow. So I just draw it once or twice with the gradient tool. Save here. Once or twice. This one. There can be a little bit of drop shadow from the body. So I'm doing the shadow in the opposite way. Like that. Same thing here with the lower arm. So we have a drop shadow there. Something that's much darker there. Okay. And then same thing here. Drop shadow coming from that direction. Now, uh, this area, since it is an incline, I am also going to use the gradient tool from below. Just gently coming that way. I don't want too much of a gradient. And I'm going to do a counter as well because we have that cylinder there drawing some shadow, but that is not working. <laughs> not working because it looks like uh, it almost a, it had a rounded area. And then you can do also a couple of things like actual cast shadow, something like that. Uh, cast shadow here as well on the leg. Uh, and I usually do my gradient outside of the selection and then everything gets filled equally. Uh, same here, we can do a little bit of past shadow on this part, something like that. And actually, since this is sort of a shadow area, I can come back around again and add a shadow coming up like that. All right. Uh, now what you can do, you can also come in with some lights. So I switch to my white. And just a bit of light there, the same thing here on the shoulder pad. Bit of light. And also here. And here you can keep in mind also that we have sort of the shadow that's being thrown. So just a gentle white like that. That's cool, I like that. And then this area should be hit by light. And this area should also be hit by light. There we go. Same here on the leg. Bit of light. And then we can say that's more light as here. Actually, I could have selected these two together. I'm gonna go over to the lines and just erase a couple of these ones because they annoy me when I look at the intersection. And then this one can also go. Just to make it a little bit clearer and there is no more right that those can go away usually i don't mind those uh, draw through lines but in this case i guess it helps if we take these away okay back to values and i'm going to add a bit of light coming up from here and i'm going to try to equalize here the two grays because it's a bit too light Something like that is better. Okay, now let's talk about cylinders. We have two cylinders, this arm, right? And I'm going to take the darkest area that I have and just from below, there we go. So that is the shadow. And as we talked before, we're going to do a little bit of underlighting as well. And on the other hand, you can add light a bit of darker. We can, we're just gonna come in with a bit of white later on. But the same technique on this side as well. Just like that, bring it in, make it dark, and then I'll take a lighter gray and make sure to come in on, on that as well. Now I'm gonna switch to my uh, soft round brush. These are all basic brushes in Photoshop, by the way. I'm only using basic brushes. Uh, selection. Make it smaller, maybe. Uh, but I wanted the white. Yeah. Much smaller. 
There we go. It's also a bit too shiny. See, I don't like that. We don't want it that shiny. And same here. Selection. It's also I'm mostly going to touch here at the end because there's still some shadow fall. And we can do the same for the big cylinder on his back. Uh, gradient tool, some white drops there. And then select everything again. I'm going to take the darkest color, which is here, and gradient tool. There, we're going to also maybe bring it down a bit. Feel there's too much on it, and a bit of white as well. And before I go away, I want to bring some of the darker back. And now I can take my brush soft brush just click click and this this could be also a bit lighter i forgot about this gradient white and then you can if if you don't feel that it's strong enough you can always zoom out like this leg way too light so we're going to darken this things like this can happen especially if you do it uh, piece by piece it's not a problem it's already better. Yeah, it's already much better. So I would say Control M, bring up the, uh, the curves, and we push up the brights, and we also bring down the lows a little bit. So try to find that balance that that works for you. Something like this. I can see that this arm needs quite a bit more shadow. There we go. Then we can apply the same sort of amount of shadow here as well. And like this is this is the fast basic uh, application of grading. Now what I can try, and I'm just going to duplicate this, bring it under my pre-sketch, and I'm just going to try and merge it so it fits, even though obviously it won't fit perfectly because I changed the drawing a little bit. If I take it away, it sort of, it sort of gives a, a feeling to where, where, where you would put what. So yeah, and then the same way as, as before, let me come back to these values. I'm going to add a new layer, I'm going to call it, well not call it, I'm going to put it on hard light and maybe we'll use an orange because this is a rusty robot. I'm just going to select around my robot, fill it with that orange and I'm going to uh, right click on the layer well, where the text is and say create clipping mask which clips it down there. And I see this is quite saturated, so I think I can come back to the uh, overlay soft light. I like the desaturated soft light in this case. So there we go. That's how you can uh, add. Like it's relatively easy as long as you have the the light direction here. Then the rest is relatively easy. Really, just filling in those those three: light, medium, and black these these three things that's what you have this that, that's why i said basic things are always helpful all right and now at the end of the video let's also talk a little about how i actually use these tips and as you can see here i do like to just make a nice gradient from light at the top towards darker at the bottom no matter what i do i usually I just throw this gradient on it because it just makes the whole picture a little bit more interesting and this together with also the rest of the gradients how i use to shade instead of just uh, blocking in uh, the colors is not necessarily correct but uh, i just like the effect it makes it pop a little bit more so if you want something super realistic yeah maybe don't use this technique but you know me i like to draw a little bit cartoony a little bit um, exaggerated because i roll in this industrial design style that i like and that is a little bit uh, exaggerated but yeah so one other thing that i wanted to mention is that i usually tend to come back towards my drawings before i finish because i notice quite often that what i tend to do is 
I don't add enough shadows or darkness within my drawings and that's why it's good to come back with a fresh eye, an eye that hasn't been looking at the drawing for the longest time and then you can say oh yeah this is way too light or this is a bit too dark and then you can you can change those things. So that's what I also do with this drawing, at least uh, this big final robot. I do take breaks every here and there and I come back and I look at it again and like, okay, I can see that it's not dark or it's too dark, whatever needs to be uh, changed. And as I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to see this whole process, I compile together all the videos together with a PSD file. So you can download that as well and look at all the layers and how I use things and you can pause the video and slow it down or f uh, speed it up and you can just see the whole process how I colored uh, this robot. And that's in the link in the description on my Gumroad and that's also how you can support me if you feel like supporting me. But yeah, that's it for this week. I do hope you enjoyed this video and uh, leave me that like button and most importantly, leave me a comment. I always love to read your comments and I want to make my uh, uploads and videos better based on those. But as always, the most important thing is that you guys have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye bye.